could you briefly describe your roles and responsibilities on LNG carrier? The main challenge is uh, our our ship carries LNG cargo. So my responsibilities are to plan the job. How a candidate should come out of this dilemma that shall I go for engine department, shall I go for deck department? You must join the deck department. <laughs> I would say to join the department. Hi guys, welcome on board Kilo Mike Niner. In this video, I have two special persons of this LNG carrier. These ranks play a very important role in running and uh, the normal operations of the LNG ship. These are very important ranks on board. So let me introduce you to the energetic and fabulous chief officer on board this large LNG carrier. It's Chief Officer Anish Gupte. Hi guys. And alongside him is one of the most dynamic and dashing first engineer, Nishant Patil. Hello guys. So thank you both for taking out time to speak with us today to give the viewers the overview of being on the highest ranks on this LNG carrier. So today I have with me two brilliant officers sailing on the LNG carriers. My first request is, could you briefly describe your roles and responsibilities on LNG carrier? So starting with Chief Officer. So uh, basically my rank is uh, Chief Officer and I am responsible uh, for uh, daily maintenance and uh, routine activities and also for uh, uh, handling cargo operations, loading, discharging, and taking care of the uh, cargo on board. What about you, uh, Nishant sir? Myself, uh, first engineer Nishant. I'm second in command of the chief engineer. So my basically my responsibilities are to plan the job and take care about maintenance and operation of the machineries and make sure that we don't have any breakdowns. So my next question to chief officer, could you tell us about the specific challenges you are facing when you are carrying this cargo that is the LNG because this type of cargo needs special expertise to handle. So what are the challenges you are facing on this type of ship? Uh, so the main challenge is uh, our, our ship carries LNG cargo. So that cargo is at extremely cold temperatures. You are carrying it at uh, around about minus 163 to 169. Uh, degree centigrade. Uh, while you are uh, loading or while you are uh, while you are taking in cargo, that time you must make sure that your tanks are ready for uh, for the operation. Your walls are ready. Everything is uh, everything is in good condition, working condition. So that's the main challenge. And uh, otherwise, these ships are quite specialized. They are built for carrying this cargo. So there are procedures set. There the ships are uh, perfect, and you 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 can just go about uh, doing your work and they will work fine. Okay. Thank you very much for that information, sir. So my next question to first engineer is what are the key maintenance tasks you are carrying out on these type of specialized ships? Those are LNG carriers. So on the ships, key maintenance tasks are uh, on the ship, the most important things are the generators power because we have cargo loaded and we have uh, special machinery running for the cargoes. So we have to produce sufficient amount of uh, power for this things to run. So our main target is that we don't lose power. So we have four major big generators and our main task is to keep them operational like, all the time. Now on this ship, we have four generators basically. Once we load the cargo till we are discharging and till we are coming back, our main task is that we should have all the four generators ready at all the time. Even if we have any failure or any breakdown or any alarm, we try to fix it in the same way. When, when, when we go UMS, then we make sure that we have already all four generators ready for the operation. Second is our main engines. Uh, we have to make sure that we don't have any alarm spending on those machineries. And we have also PMS. So according to that, we have to manage our jobs. We have to do these jobs 
as fast as possible because on the LNG carriers we get very short time in ports, short anchorages. So we have to plan accordingly. And yeah, we also have other machineries like air compressors, purifiers, pumps, uh, air conditioners, package air cords. And we have PMS system for all these machineries and uh, we keep on doing according to the plan maintenance system and also yeah, take down it. So it was quite a informative uh, uh, knowledge which we get. And uh, sir, next is you both are on the senior most rank on board this ship because you are the HODs like chief officer is for the deck department and uh, first engineer is uh, handling all the crews and machineries in the engine department. So sir, how you are managing all the crew and how you are motivating them to do daily tasks, chief officer? So managing uh, crew is basically you you must maintain a good atmosphere uh, on board. Communication is key. So if you maintain good communication, if you if you listen to others, then basically the atmosphere is good. And um, main challenge is to manage fatigue. So if you've got a fast turnaround of ports, like uh, if you've got ships uh, visiting ports back to back, then you have to uh, manage the rules accordingly, and you have to manage uh, the work and the hours for, for the okay. What about you? Yes, I totally agree with the uh, chief officer. For me, every rank is important on board. Let it be a uh, chief engineer, captain, or it could be a viper or uh, OS. Everybody has their own role. For me, I listen to every everyone during my meetings, whatever the concerns are there. If any problems in engine room, any reportings are there, we listen. And secondly, it's very important to keep the motivation high during the work hours. If anybody comes to me, if I have with any problem, press it, we discuss. And uh, yes, on board, we are only 36 people and we have to look for each other. It might be safety, might be anything. So, yes. Both of them keep the morale of the crew very high and motivate each and every crew on board to participate, do their job safely. So, sir, safety is paramount on these type of ships because we are carrying a cargo which is very dangerous and flammable. So, how you are taking care of the safety on board as a safety officer, so chief officer? When it comes to safety, the culture, safety culture in our company, quite strong it starts from uh, an individual basically you have to look out for your own safety so every anybody who is assigned any job he has to take care of his own safety and then we've got a lot of procedures uh, we've got permits we've got uh, risk assessments job hazard analysis behavior based safety program so all these programs are there all these uh, things are there to keep in check i mean whether we are doing the jobs in a safe manner but the most important and the most basic part is that once if an individual thinks that he has to do a job safely, then I can tell you that the job will be carried out safely. Okay, sir. Sir, what about you? Yes, with regard to safety, I would say that yeah, engine room is very not a very safe place to work, I would say, because we have very high pressures around airlines, we have hot fuel going around, we have water going around, fuel going around. So yes, with safety, first line of defense is our PP. So whenever we start our job, I make sure that everybody's PP is in good condition. They are using it all the time. And secondly, as the officer said that uh, in our company we have a proper uh, procedures, we have job analysis, risk assessments. So whenever we plan any job, we go through the uh, risks involved in the jobs, we make hazard analysis and then we plan accordingly. Secondly, on this kind of trips, most dangerous thing is the fire. We conduct uh, frequent uh, drills and uh, also fire rounds, fire running systems. So as you have seen, they both stress mostly on the safety and also yes, as uh, first engineer said correctly that we are doing the frequent drills and trainings, uh, sophisticated equipments to fight the fire. So that plays a very important role in safety against the fire. And also we have quite a lot of life-saving appliances, life-saving equipments. So those all play an important role. Most importantly, equipments are there, but the personnel should be trained to use those equipments. That is mostly stressed over here by these guys. So they motivate all the crew to participate in the drills, participate in the trainings so that they will be familiar with the operation of those equipments. Work instructions are laid down, procedures are there. The only thing is you have to practice that. Thank you very much for that information, sir. So my next question is uh, quite a diplomatic question. <laughs> Newcomer who is coming to join the Merchant Navy in his school time when he thinks to join the Merchant Navy or shipping, he wants to go on board. So 
first question in his mind while filling the form is that should I join the tech department or should I join the engine department? So I need the expert comments from both of you. How a person or how a candidate should come out of this dilemma that shall I go for engine department? Shall I go for tech department? So there's always a confusion regarding that. So I want the solution on that. So first chief officer. <laughs> if you ask me, you must join the tech department. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it totally depends on the person who's joining. Uh, uh, both uh, both uh, departments have their own roles, their own uh, way of working. So uh, I would say it's up to an individual's choice. But from my side, join the tech department. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about you, sir? Yeah, same for me. I would say to join in the department but yes both departments have their own uh, rules and responsibilities both are important uh, yeah but it still depends on their own interests what they like okay so if you like machineries more then go for engine department <laughs> if you like to stay in on deck in open air then you should go for the deck department anyways that is your personal choice both the departments are good and both the departments play the very important role in running the ship both are equally important so there is no comparison to that. Both are equally important for running the ship. If engineers are not there, ship will not run. If officers are not there, ship will not run. It's a teamwork. You cannot run a ship by your own. So that is very important. Sir, I need you to give the message to the viewers, to message to the upcoming seafarers or upcoming generations who will become the future of the seas. So what is your message to them? For uh, for the youngsters who are coming, I mean, this career has a lot to offer. You can join Merchant Navy. It's a wonderful career. You will get a lot of uh, opportunities to meet different kind of kind of people. You meet different cultures, different people from uh, other countries, and uh, you get, you get to learn a lot and you get to visit a lot of places, which makes you I mean, which helps in developing your character. A lot. You can join this career if you you are up for it, and if you work hard, then it is a, quite a rewarding career. Okay. What about you, sir? I would say that uh, yes, this kind of uh, career demands a person who is emotionally and uh, also physically strong. At sea, we are very far away from our families, and it is a quite bit difficult sometimes. So yeah, also the person who is emotionally strong is also better at his own personal life. So I, I would suggest that the person who is coming here should be good at both of these things. Okay, so as Chief Officer told that if you want to join, it's a lucrative career to go for it. And as First Engineer told that you should be mentally, physically, emotionally strong because in the middle of the sea, nobody is coming to pamper you, nobody is coming to give you sympathy or something because it's, it's a challenging career, it's a challenging job because out at sea you have to face various challenges and every day is a new day at sea some day it is cold some day it is hot some day the sea is calm some day the sea is choppy so it's not a static career like you are going to the office nine to five it's not like that it's totally different 24 7 you have to be aware you have your mind should be open for any challenges it requires quite a strong mindset and also the strong emotional and mental strength so thank you very much sir for your messages and i wanted to tell you that both of them have a vast experience at sea both of them have 15 years of experience at sea they grown up from the cadet then became third officer third engineer then became second officer second engineer now they are chief officer first engineer and soon i will wish them all the best for their future the future master and future chief engineer maybe we'll get some time later when they will be upgraded on their ranks so all the very best to you sir thank you very much for joining me on kilo mic niner and inform the viewers regarding the journey regarding the challenges regarding the safety and uh, everything else like uh, for your messages thank you very much for that so and thank you very much for taking out some time from your busy schedule to make this video and i wish you all the very best and safe seas thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>